Good evening, good evening. This is Lynette and this is the 21st Century Watchman's Channel. And it's about time. It's about time is a one year chronological Bible study where we go through the books of the Bible in time order. And this week, this day, this day we're on Second Chronicles, chapters 32 and 33. Let's get into it, shall we? After these things and these acts of faithfulness, Sennacherib, of king of Assyria, came and invaded Judah and encamped against the fortified cities, thinking to win them for himself. And you ask yourself, what are these acts of faithfulness? Which makes sense. Hezekiah did a few things in Second Chronicles 29. We found that out. He opened the doors of the house of the Lord that had been closed with all these bad and um, wicked kings. He um, and, rep and repaired these doors. He had the Levites consecrate themselves and to cleanse and consecrate the house of the Lord on the inside and to remove anything that was bad. He had the priests to offer sacrifices to renew that practice. He also ordered the priests to offer um, praise and worship to renew that practice. He made service to the house of the Lord a regular basis and restored that to what it was. That's five things. He even celebrated the Passover and invited the tribes of Manasseh and Ephraim to um, worship with him and to worship with them together as one body, one nation under God. And then the people that did come, because everybody did not show back up, he interceded for the people that were that showed up because they didn't know the way and they came back a little unclean, but they wanted to celebrate and try to get something. You know, the people that come to church on Easter only, they got that one, that Mother's Day and Easter, they not really all the way together. You know the ones. He was making sure that they were clean because God had a standard for going into the house of the Lord, for going to worship him. And he wanted to make sure that their worship was acceptable and that they felt a part. And so he interceded on their behalf. He did a lot of good things. So these are the acts of faithfulness that this man performed, which is a beautiful thing. And then it says, verse 2, and when Hezekiah saw that, Sennacherib had come and intended to fight against Jerusalem. He planned with his officers and his mighty men to stop the water of the springs that were outside the city. He didn't, and, and, and they helped him. He didn't want them to have access to his water sources because that's what usually happens in war. The enemy tries to, to cut out your resources, your natural resources, to make sure that you feel a need to come out. And when you come out of your fortified areas, that's when they attack. But he was trying to make sure that he was insulated enough and make sure that they didn't have access to his resources, which totally made sense. Very strategic. So it says, a great many people were gathered and they stopped all the springs and the brook that flowed through the land, saying, why should the chronicles of Assyria come and find much water? Exactly. Why should they come over here and find some water? It's not what, what's going to happen. And so here's what Hezekiah's tunnel looks like. He, this is where he, this is the water sh uh, shaft and whatnot. So this is underground tunnel where the water was. He had the, the um, tunnel and the water funneled through those where, those areas. So they couldn't get to him. He did everything underground and he redirected the water. That's engineering. He had a great mind. Way impressed with Hezekiah, aren't you? I thought it was wonderful. I'm like, okay, you better go, Hezekiah. You did your thing, thing, bro. This was good. Then it says, so this is also a part of the tunnel that was used. This is an inscription that's theirs in Hebrew. But it says, here you are standing at the place where the Shiloh inscription, written approximately 2,700 years ago, during the reign of Hezekiah, was discovered. See, this is where it was discovered. And they have, they've restored it so that it looks nice and it's clean. People walk through it all the time. Time It takes about 25 minutes, so I'm told. And it's a great thing, though, right? It's a great thing that they're finding these artifacts and these places in the Bible so people won't say, this didn't happen. This shuts down the naysayers and lets you know that God is real. If you didn't, if you didn't have any faith, it's there. I think it's wonderful. So it says, he set to work resolutely and built up all the wall that was broken down and raised towers upon it. Hezekiah is doing his thing thing. And outside it, he built another wall and he strengthened the Milo in the city of David. He also made weapons and shields in abundance. So he made a lot of weapons and shields. And he set combat commanders over the people and gathered them together to him in the square at the gate of the city. 
and spoke encouragingly to them, saying, Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or dismayed before the king of Assyria and all the horde that is with him, for there are more with us than with him. With him is an arm of flesh, but with us is the Lord our God to help us fight and to fight our battles. God's just not going to help them fight. He's not going to just empower them. He's going to fight the battle altogether. God was not playing. And this is what he said. Now, in the other accounts, we don't get to hear what Hezekiah was saying to the people. And we don't see all of, and that means Isaiah and the kings. We don't get to hear all of this great stuff that Hezekiah was saying. That's why it's important to have different chroniclers, different writers, so that we can hear these different accounts. That's why eyewitness accounts are so important. And it says, and the people took confidence from the words of Hezekiah, king of Judah. You need somebody in your corner, in your camp, who is egging you on, hyping you up, letting you know that God is with you. you if you don't have people in your corner that are doing this, then we need to find some more people for our corners. These are just my thoughts. After this, Sennacherib, king of Assyria, who was besieging Lachish with all his forces, sent his servants to Jerusalem, to Hezekiah, king of Judah, and to all the people of Judah who were in Jerusalem, saying, Thus says Sennacherib, king of Assyria, On what are you trusting that you endure the siege in Jerusalem? Why are you still fighting? And why are you still, you know, doing it vigilantly? Because it's me. Don't y'all have heard about who I am? It, he says, go on to say further, is not Hezekiah misleading you that he may give you over to die by famine and by thirst when he tells you the Lord our God will deliver us from the, the hand of the king of Assyria? See, the king of Assyria, he says, by, by famine and by thirst. He doesn't know anything about these fortified cities and he cannot even get to the, uh, the water. But he thinks he's gotten everything all together. And so he thinks he knows what's going on inside of Hezekiah's camp. He doesn't know a thing. So it says, has not this same Hezekiah taken away his high places and his altars and commanded Judah and Jerusalem before one altar you shall worship and on it you shall burn your, your sacrifices? So he's saying, you only got one God to sacrifice to. He, Hezekiah got rid of all your worship places and your gods. What you going to do? You doing, you not paying attention, Judah? You doing too much or you doing too little? Do you not know what I and my fathers have done to all the peoples of our of other lands? So we, this is what the enemy does. He comes to try to tell you about how bad he is. He starts speaking his truth into your um, into your spirit. That's why Hezekiah prepared them. They already had a word to hang on to. Do we have words to hang on to? Just going to keep on going. Were the gods of the nations of those lands at all able to deliver their lands out of my hand? Who among all the gods of those nations that my father's devoted to destruction was able to deliver his people from my hand? That your God should be able to deliver you from my hand. These are all the gods of those nations. And now you just got your God. How he going to do it? If all of the other gods couldn't do it, how's your God going to do it? Well, if he knew like I know. My God's got a big G. He's got that little, those, those are little Gs. These are just my thoughts. Now, therefore, do not let Hezekiah deceive you or mislead you in this fashion, and do not believe him. For no god of any nation or kingdom has been able to deliver his people from my hand or from the hand of my fathers. How much less will your God deliver you out of my hand? This boy has got some stuff to say. He sent his people down. He didn't say it himself, though, but he sent his people down to say this stuff. And his servants said still more against the Lord God and against his servant Hezekiah. But they were still talking all that stuff, all that yap yap in the background. Noise, noise, noise. You've got to be able to silence the noise. And he wrote letters to cast contempt on the Lord, the God of Israel, and to speak against him, saying, Like the gods of the nations of the lands who have not delivered their people from my hands, so the God of Hezekiah will not deliver his people from my hand. Hezekiah is going to fall just like everybody else did. His God's going to fall. And the people of his land are going to fall. You all better fall in line. And they shouted it with a loud voice in the language of Judah. So they were speaking in Hebrew, saying their little stuff. They didn't just come in their Assyrian language. They came and speak it in. And um, it wasn't just no, it wasn't Aramaic or anything like that. They came in to speak in straight up Hebrew and to tell them what, so that the common people could understand. Wow. 
And it says, and they shouted with a loud voice in the language of Judah to the people of Jerusalem who were on the wall to frighten and terrify them. That's what, that's why they talk to us and, and speak to our spirits because if we're, we get afraid in our spirits, that's the first thing to make us turn and go back. He says, in order that they might take the city. That spirit makes you capitulate. And so you have, it either fortifies you, it makes you, it propels you on and it, or either it makes you capitulate. We have to be careful what we put into our spirit, what we allow, what we allow in our ears. They had to block him out and keep the words of Hezekiah in. And they spoke of the God of Jerusalem as they spoke of the gods of the people of the earth, which are the works of men's hands. Come on now. God's not the work of anybody's hands. <laughs> All right. Then Hezekiah the king and, and Isaiah the prophet, the son of Amos, prayed because of this and cried to heaven. So both of them prayed. Both of them prayed. Hezekiah and Isaiah. And the Lord sent an angel who cut off all the mighty warriors and commanders and officers in the camp of the king of Assyria. So in the other accounts, it lets us know that 185,000 men were laid to rest that day. He killed them, the angel of the Lord, the, the, the angel that the Lord sent. 185,000 in one night because God doesn't play. You thought that those were big things. Let me show you what big things are. So he returned with shame of face to his own land. Yeah, he did. And when he came into the house of his God, some of his own sons struck him down there with the sword. He went back home to die by his own hands, by, with his kids. Because in the other accounts, it lets you know that he was never going to set foot in that city. There was never going to be an arrow thrown inside J Judah in Jerusalem. There was nothing going to happen there. And nothing did. So the Lord saved Hezekiah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem from the hand of Sennacherib, king of Assyria, and from the hand of all his enemies. And he provided for them on every side. He saved him from all of his enemies. And many brought gifts to the Lord, to Jerusalem, and precious things to Hezekiah, king of Judah, so that he was exalted in the sight of all nations from that time forward, from that time onward. So here we are. He's getting he's getting a name for himself. He's get, he's getting more likes on his on his profile. He's getting more likes on you know, and he's becoming this guy. He's got got a few followers now. You know, we might be up to a hundred k or more followers. He's not quite at that million, but people his, his name's beginning to ring some bells out here in these uh, biblical streets. In those days, Hezekiah became sick and was at the point of death. So after you have a victory. A lot of time tragedy strikes. We have to remember that. Some, we go from a high to a low a lot of the times. And he prayed to the Lord and he answered him and gave him a sign. But Hezekiah did not make return according to the benefit done to him. And for his heart was proud. See, it doesn't tell you that in the other accounts. That's why it's so important for us to do this in time order. Because if you don't remember, you know, it was so far away and we read it some books back. You will forget that this happened, and so he asked for he asked for a sign. But our boy Hezekiah didn't make return. He had a proud a proud heart, and that wasn't cool. Therefore, wrath came upon him and Judah and Jerusalem. When you're a leader, your people get affected by your decisions. It's important that we don't act rashly, and we always act responsibly, to, um, because we are responsible for other people. We just are. But Hezekiah humbled himself for the pride of his heart, both he and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, so that the wrath of the Lord did not come upon them in the days of Hezekiah. There we go. He humbled his heart. And Hezekiah had very great riches and honor. That's why he was proud. And he made for himself treasuries for silver, for gold, for precious stones, for spices, for shields, and for all kinds of costly vessels. He had these, these places where he kept his stuff. I got this is my, this is my gold, this is my my silver, this is my precious stone, this is my uh, my amethyst and my onyx and all these other stones. I did all, I got all of this. My diamonds for spices. The spices are good for um, preservation of food. So it's not just a happenstance that we like spices. It doesn't just make things smell good. It is very good for um, food to be preserved, the meats and things of that nature. And it says for shields and for all kinds of costly vessels.
storehouse is also for the yield of grain, wine, and oil, and stalls for all kinds of cattle and sheepfold. He had, so he was, wasn't maybe balling at the, the size of Solomon, but it, had, it says he didn't have great riches. He had very great riches. So he had a little something, something. He had, you know, might have been a billionaire according to his time. I mean, he wasn't on the, on Solomon's level because no man was. And it's, the Bible says that that wasn't, you know, happening. But he was he was balling, balling, just throwing it out there. He likewise provided cities for himself and flocks and herds in abundance. For God had given him very great possessions. Keep saying very great. Not just great. This same Hezekiah closed the upper outlet of the waters of Gihon. And directed them down to the west side of the city of David. He was a great engineer, engineer, and Hezekiah prospered in all his works. And so, in the matter of the envoys of the princes of Babylon, who had been sent to him to inquire about the sign that had been done in the land, the, the, so the big boys know who he is. His little name started ringing bells. Now the big boys want to know. So the king of, of Babylon sent some princes to see what was up with our boy uh, Hezekiah because. I heard you, you know, you got a sign from the Lord and you, I mean, basically you were able to defeat the, the king of Assyria and you were able to get healed. You're, you're doing some great things out here. Hezekiah, what's up though? Let me, let me get a little bit of that shine. Let me find a little bit of your secret. Let me bring you into the room because this is where the ballers are. You a baller now. Come on into the room. So when you get, you get to the point, you get a certain status and other people start noticing you. Don't forget who got you there. And don't forget how you got there. You got there by talking to God all the time. You didn't. You don't put God to the side once the big boys bring you into the room. Because what got you into the room was God's blessings, God's favor. And when you don't take that favor into the room with you, and you leave it out and take your pride in, that's when you mess up. All right. And it says, and so the matter of the envoys of the princes of Babylon, who had been sent to him to inquire about the sign that had been done in the land. God, God left him to himself in order to test him and to know all that was in his heart. God took a step back to see what he was going to do. Now that you're in here with the big boys, how are you going to act? Now the rest of the acts of Hezekiah and his good deeds, behold, they are written in the vision of Isaiah the prophet the son of Amos, in the book of the kings of Judah and Israel. And Hezekiah slept with his fathers, and they buried him in the upper part of the tombs of the sons of David. And all Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem did him honor at his death. And Manasseh, his son, reigned in his place. All right. Manasseh was 12 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned 55 years in Jerusalem, and he did what was evil in the sight of the Lord, according to the abominations of the nations whom the Lord drove out before the people of Israel. For he rebuilt the high places that his father Hezekiah had broken down. And he erected altars to the Baals and made Asherah and worshiped all the hosts of heaven and served them. And he built altars in the house of the Lord, of which the Lord had said, In Jerusalem shall my name be forever. He, he built altars in the house of the Lord. He was doing way too much. He didn't just leave them outside in the high places. He didn't put them out on the other side of the temple. He brought them on in. What they do that at Manasseh? And he built altars for all the hosts of heaven in the two courts of the house of the Lord. So he had enough room. I'm, I'm going to go to the two courts and get for my other gods. Manasseh. And he burned his sons as an offering. He burned his sons. He didn't just burn one son. He burned his sons as an offering in the valley of the, the, son, the, um, the son of Hinnom. Why would you do that? And used fortune telling and omens and sorcery and dealt with mediums and with necromancers. He was doing the most. Miss Cleo, psychic hot, psychic hotline, the uh, the tarot reader. It's just a lot going on. Fortune telling. Just needed to know from all the wrong people. Didn't want to see God, but he wanted to know. Clearly, he wanted to know because he wanted to know his fortune. He wanted to know what the omens were. He wanted to. He wanted to from the medium to get a, a sense of what was going on. Necromancers talking to the ancestors. He was trying to get some knowledge. He didn't want to seek it from God. That's blatant disrespect. The fact that you really want to know the future. Ask the Lord to give you uh, an eye to see. Send a prophet. But no, he had a prophet in his land. He had 
our boy Isaiah. And it is said that Manasseh was the one that had him killed. That Manasseh um, put an order out or a hit out on it. And Isaiah went to go hide in a tree and he had that tree sawn in half, unfortunately. And it says, he did much in the sight of the Lord, provoking him to anger. And the carved image of the idol that he had made, he said in the house of God, of which God said to David and Solomon's son, Solomon his son, in this house and in Jerusalem, which I have chosen out of all the tribes of Israel, I will put my name forever. I will no more remove the foot of Israel from the land that I appointed for your fathers, if only they will be careful to do all that I have commanded them, all the law, the statutes, and the rules given through Moses. He just did what I said. Just do what I say, and you'll have everything. You'll be, and you'll have a place to stay that's, that's yours this entire time. Manasseh led Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem astray to do more evil than the nations whom the Lord destroyed before the people of Israel. He did more than what was done before. More evil. Mine. The Lord spoke to Manasseh and to his people, but they paid no attention. The Lord was talking to Manasseh during this time. We don't find that out in the other accounts. He was talking to him, trying to get their attention, and they refused. They were, how you don't give the Lord the hand? Don't give the Lord the hand. These are my thoughts. Anyway. Therefore, the Lord brought upon them the commanders of the army of the king of Assyria. The ones who Hezekiah was able to avoid, he would, but he had to see him. You're going to see me, said the king of Assyria, basically. And who captured Manasseh with hooks and bound him with chains of bronze and brought him to Babylon. There we go. And when he was in distress, he entreated the favor of the Lord. When he was in distress, won't God bring you to your knees but you're going to have to acknowledge who he is and that's unfortunate for those who have they have to be uh hurt to that extent where they have to call on it i want to call on him i need to call on him i can count it a privilege to be able to call on it we shouldn't be pushed to the point where he's all we have he shouldn't be our last resort. He should be our, for, our first resource. These are my thoughts. All right. And when he was in distress, he entreated the favor of the Lord and humbled himself greatly before the God of his fathers. He did. He humbled himself. This is a good thing to know. Because I was wondering why homeboy was able to reign 55 years. How are you going to reign 55 years? And he was a whole hot mess in these streets. This is how he was able to do it. He prayed to him, and God was moved by his entreaty. God is always willing to forgive if we just repent. And he heard his plea and brought him again to Jerusalem, into his kingdom. What a wonderful thing. Then Manasseh knew that the Lord was God. He had to learn him for himself. He wasn't going to just be the God of his fathers. Sometimes when your children are not doing what they're supposed to be doing, it's because they don't know the Lord for themselves. They're, your story's not enough sometimes. It should be, but your story it make just that we're so that we're so stiff necked as a as a human race that sometimes it's not enough. Although we'll we'll believe the world's story, but the God story and the and the persecution and the and the trials and the the not being like culture is such a a, a hardship that they would just rather be out there in these streets. But this boy got to know the Lord for himself. He got drugged by his nose with the hooks in him all the way to babylon he got his sin afterward he built out and i'm sorry he built an outer wall for the city of david west of Gion in the valley and for the entrance into the fish gate and he carried it out i'm sorry he carried it around ophel and raised it to a very great height so he he built this um an altar i'm, I'm sorry an outer an outer wall you know for the city of david something another fortified wall he also put commanders of the army in all the fortified cities in, Ju in Judah. He's trying to make sure that this will never happen again. And he took away the foreign gods and the idol from the house of the Lord and all the altars that he had built on the mountain of the house of the Lord and in Jerusalem. And he threw them outside of the city. He also restored the altar of the Lord and offered on it sacrifices of peace offerings and of thanksgiving. And it, see how he changed? Won't he do it? So those of you that are praying for your kids, and I'm one of them. Train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he won't depart from it. This boy, this boy right here done turned it around. 
turned it around. This is it right now. And he commanded Judah to serve the Lord. He had been telling them to do other things before. And he was leading by example. Now he, tell, he commanded them to serve the Lord, the God of Israel. Nevertheless, the people still sacrificed at the high places, but only to the Lord their God. Look at that. Now the rest of the acts of Manasseh and his prayer to his God and the words of the seers who spoke to him in the name of the Lord, the God of Israel. Behold, they are in the chronicles of the kings of Israel and his prayer and how God was moved by his entreaty and all his sin and his faithlessness. So we had faithfulness in the beginning of this, Second uh, Chronicles 32, talking about his father, how he was faithful. This boy was his sin and his faithlessness and the sites on which he built high places and set up the ashram and the images before he humbled himself behold they're written in the chronicles of the seers so the the books of the the prophets of the time so manasseh slept with his fathers and they buried him in his house and amon his son reigned in his place praise the lord isn't that wonderful amon was 22 years old when he began to reign and he reigned two years in jerusalem just two you know what this means and they don't get a long time when they messing up. And he did what was evil in the sight of the Lord, as Manasseh, his father, had done. Now, after his, he saw his father turn it around. But he had to learn his own lesson. Amen sacrificed to all the images that Manasseh, his father, had made and served him. Because his father didn't break the images down. He just threw them outside the city. I guess he wouldn't grab them. And he did not humble himself before the Lord, as Manasseh, his father, had humbled himself. But this Amon incurred guilt more and more. And his servants conspired against him and put him to death in his house. See? Won't they get you? And won't God get you? You've been, you been—you—you know what to do when you go act a fool. This is what we don't want. Keep, keep your children before in, in prayer. Keep them before the Lord. But the people of the land struck down all those who had conspired against King Amon. They went and got them. So we, the, uh, the first group killed Amon, now the people came and got them. And the people of the land made Josiah his son king in his place. And that's how that ended. Let's end on a great note. Let's believe that God will save you and turn it around like he did for Manasseh. We hope that it doesn't have to come to this point, but let's believe that. So let's say this prayer with me, shall we? Father, it is written in your word that if I confess with my mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in my heart that you have raised him from the dead, I shall be saved. Therefore, Father, I confess that Jesus is my Lord. I make him Lord of my life right now. I believe in my heart that you raised Jesus from the dead. I renounce my past life with Satan and close the door to any of his devices. I thank you for forgiving me of all my sin. Jesus is my Lord and I am a new creation. Old things have passed away. Now all things become new. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You have said this, if you have said this prayer, thank the Lord. And I want you to put your name in the chat so we can rejoice with you. And if you've said this prayer and you don't have a, a, a nice little church in your area that you know of, put your name and your city and your state in the chat and we will help you find a church. How about that? I'm looking forward to helping you and I'm, I'm rejoicing with you. And if you just repented, please put your name in the chat so we can rejoice with you there. Because And you already know my name, so be rejoicing for me too. Pray and pray and pray. Keep us, keep us all covered. And... Finally, can you do me a favor? Do you mind? Like and share this video. Subscribe to our channel. Let the world know that Jesus saves and that the word is relatable. Even the Old Testament applies to now. We've got to grow through the word together. Let's grow through. How about that? God bless you. Have a great rest of your day. And it's about time.